morning on a Saturday on a beautiful day like today in January of 2018 over a million people all across the state of Hawaii woke to their cell phones buzzing and ringing radio alerts blaring with a message that read ballistic missiles ran inbound I and so many others. I happened to be here that morning. I started calling my friends and calling my family to tell them and where they were. But just as you here might imagine, if we all got that alert at this moment, so too did people all across the world start to ask themselves the question, where is their shelter? Where do I go? Where do I take my children? to be safe, knowing that there is an inbound missile to Hawaii with a nuclear warhead and we have just minutes to live. We had college students at the University of Hawaii sprinting across campus trying to figure out where they could possibly go to get shelter. A father who lowered his little girl down a manhole, thinking that may be the only place she may be safe and telling her goodbye and might not see you again. I heard after from a father who had one kid in town on the island of Oahu and another child on the other side of the island and himself in the middle trying to decide which of his children he might Experiencing that harsh reality. That was as true for us there in Hawaii in 2018 as it is for us here today. There is no shelter. Our leaders failed us then, and they continue to fail us now. Those people who work in our nation's capital eagerly continue to escalate tensions, eagerly wage new cold wars, understanding that if there's a nuclear attack, yes, they will be okay in their bunkers where they literally have plans to be able to continue to be any consideration for the rest of us and the destruction and incineration that their wars will cause. This is ultimately the thing that caused me to run for president in 2020 because I saw where our leaders were taking us. I saw of where this new Cold War and nuclear arms race would eventually lead. Whether intentional or accidental, there is only one destination for such wars, and that is a nuclear holocaust. I made it clear then that it's the central issue of our time, the most important issue facing us in the 21st century, that there was a clear choice. continue to race rapidly towards nuclear break, for a new Cold War with Russia, a new Cold War with China, and therefore racing towards nuclear war. Now, for those of you who remember that election, this issue was not important to the media. They refused to talk about it. They refused to raise the question of the day. There was no other candidate willing to talk about this issue. It was not important to them then, and it's not important to them now. So here we are, two short years later. What I warned about then is now our reality. This proxy war that we're fighting against Russia right now could turn at any moment into a direct conflict between the United States and NATO and Russia, a country that has more nuclear weapons than any other in the world. Now, anyone with a little bit of common sense knows that a cold war can very quickly turn to a hot war. Now, when you're waging a hot war against a nuclear-armed country, it's just a matter of time before it leads to the use of nuclear weapons at any moment. And here's the insanity of it all. We have talking heads on TV, we have politicians, we have very powerful people 
here in the United States and all around the world, speaking with a straight face, well, you know, if we start World War III or when World War III starts, here's how we're gonna fight and win. That if Putin decides to use tactical nuclear weapons, here's what we're going to do as though such a war could ever be won. It cannot be won. World War III cannot be won. They're living in this archaic mindset of World War I and World War II and not facing the realities that we have today. There is no way to win a nuclear war. There is only one end, and that is a nuclear holocaust. So we're gathered here today because we know that it doesn't have to be this way. We know that there is a better way and that the task before us is urgent and necessary. We have people gathered here from all over the country, people who are gathered here from all ends of the political spectrum. And if we were to have a conversation, my guess is there may be other things we don't agree on. But the truth is that we could disagree about everything else. Everything else. But the one thing that we do agree on that brings us together here today is that we value life. We want to live. We want our loved ones to live and thrive. We want to be able to go out on a day like today and walk in the trees and hear the birds chirping with the sun shining down on our face. We understand that whatever our differences may be, that we must stand together as people who cherish peace, security, and freedom. We must set aside our differences, work together to fire those warmongering politicians from both political parties who serve their masters in the military and destroy our loved ones, our communities, our country, here in the United States and around the world. If we stand together on this one issue, we will be able to wrest the power away from those who don't care about us, those who bend the knee to their overlords in the military-industrial complex, take back that power and ensure that we take those trillions of dollars they are feeding into the war machine and instead dedicate those resources towards peace, prosperity, and freedom. We cannot be free and prosperous or safe unless we are at peace. We are the spark that has the power to light that fire to bring about change. So let that spark of love that exists in every single one of our hearts, that aloha, be that inspiration and that fuel that provides us with the courage to fight against these powerful entities, knowing that our cause is just, it is right, and it is necessary. We must work together towards this future and fulfilling and accomplishing this mission of peace. Thank you very much. Aloha. Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard, give it up for the